we also have a very fun topic on the metaphor refantasio demo. I really like Persona, and then I weirdly I like Dungeons and Dragons yes, so much. I was, that's that what I was it, thinking like, about you. It's like this is so D and D. Yeah, I like fantasy stuff, and I liked it before Dungeons and Dragons. But because fantasy is like the default setting for Dungeons and Dragons, I just consume a lot of fantasy and fantasy adjacent stuff. Mm -hmm. So now I like fantasy more because of that game system. And then combining that with like the Persona stuff, I was just like, man, this is so cool. I really like the way that like um, the magic in this world is through these like devices called igniters. Mm -hmm. But there's like a compendium of like just lore about the world. I've been, oh my god, all um, the different sub races and stuff and all their backstory and like the hierarchy yeah. of each and like why they're viewed as better or not or worse or not. I've been reading all of that. I'm so invested in the story and lore of this world already. In the Persona games, you've like just moved to a new town. So you would like naturally not know things about that area. And so you just kind of learn them organically. In this instance, your character has been in this world and has like background for things going on. Yeah. So it would make sense for him to just be like, oh, I do know these things already. I and Then you, the player, can just go and read it if you want. But you don't have to. Like, it still makes sense. I just I like knowing all the nitty gritty. Me too. Um, I played like two hours. I saw some, one of my like former coworkers has played the demo for like eight hours. And I was like, whoa, OK. No, yeah, I'm really intrigued by this. I'm really infatuated with the characters. I think the characters are fantastic. What I really like about what they're doing here is they've just ascent they've created almost like the the spiritual successor to persona but persona's not done yet which is like this almost feels like they've yeah they've sunsetted persona and want to try out something new and put a lot of heart into it like coming into this i was almost kind of like oh well it might just kind of be like a little side thing and i know a lot of people probably saw the the, there was a bunch of news articles that was essentially the developer saying, we just kept adding stuff and now it's 100 hours. So it, like they've put a lot of work into this. I'm like, well, that <laughs> yeah. might just be a lot of dungeon crawling and kind of grindy stuff. And maybe it's not. This thing is very well packed and like very interesting. And there's a lot of different stuff going on. And also not even that, it improves upon the gameplay mechanics of Persona 5 to the point that I much prefer to play this over Persona 5 and going mm. back to Persona 5 it almost feel like I'm losing out on some stuff which is also kind of crazy because you'd think it would just be like a whole different the either identical fight mechanics or slight differences but there's huge differences that I like way more I thought it would be more of a departure than it has been at least so far like maybe it gets uh, uh, crazier later on um, but if you were like not interested in this because you're like, well, I really like Persona and I don't want a game that's going to be different than that. Yeah. It's like so much. <laughs> it's it's going to be so intensely recognizable. Yeah, I'm almost um, surprised one, by how Persona E they made it. To, like it's 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 Persona. Yeah. It's Persona with a new cast yeah. of characters, slight tweaks on gameplay that are good. It's not like you're lessening Persona to make it more palatable to more people. It's better Persona gameplay in my opinion. And I like all the characters. I like what the story is doing the lore is super good and as the story continues mm. it just it's it ramps up like crazy the character design is oh, crazy i know it goes like it's in a way uh they just it's it's either really cool or like outrageous to a point where i'm like i can't help but be like this is really good just because i and there's so much going on um when this game starts it's like this is a fantasy this is not a real thing. This is a story of a made up world. And they like really lean into like the idea of like stories in the whole thing. Yeah. When at the very start, it's not like, hey, what's your character's name? It's like, hey, what's your name? Hey, whoever's playing this game, what is your name? Yes. Put your name in. You'll name the protagonist later. And I was like, oh, that's really nice that. because I, I never know if I should put my own name in or if I should make up a name. Um, but it is a fantasy, both in the sense of like, that's the genre, but also they really lean into the idea of like telling a story and like becoming a hero through that process. Mm -hmm. It's, I really like, it's, there's a bunch of nerds on this, on staff for this that are just nerds for narrative design too, right? Like as a D and D person, mm -hmm. you must love that too, because the whole system for fighting and stuff is built around narrative design structure, not like in games, but in literature as well. Like all the all the proper mm -hmm. nouns they're using are like buzzwords for how to write a good story and stuff, too. So yes. it's almost like it's self-referentiating itself to be like, not only do we know how to write a good story, we're going to tell you the the 
the pieces that go into a good story and just make those the names for our game mechanic system. So that makes me go, oh, I really trust you because you're using these phrases that authors have used for hundreds of years to construct like the ideal story. And you're just like chucking them into a game setting. And oh, I just I love it. It's so exciting. My favorite line in the demo very early on. Yeah. Um, you have a fairy character that's like your friend named Galica. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like, oh, real quick, let me do something. And then she starts the background music. Yeah. And then she says, music was the first magic this world ever knew. And so in world, all the music is happening because Galica cast this spell in your head. And there's like in the lore page, it's like, yeah, you can cast, you can make music happen to like reflect emotions and what's going on in the world, but no one ever does it because it doesn't have any tactical advantage, but you're experiencing it right now anyways. So it's a thing of like, even that for some reason they've explained and I'm like, that goes so hard. Dude. I love, I love, love music too. So mm-hmm. just like calling music magic is like, Mwah. It's so true. The way they set up this world is um, there's a bunch of different races and obviously prejudice exists between them as most <laughs> multi-race <laughs> fictional areas are. But you're this character called an Elda. And I get Eldas kind of just look like humans, to be honest. He has two different colored eyes. But other than that, he just really is a dude. And they're considered like the least of all the races like like essentially you walk into this city and everyone's like ew you're so gross like why are you even here people don't sell to you people will triple charge you and like all this you essentially are supposed to feel like you have a lot of prejudice against you and that could be something that comes across sort of you know not properly handled (laughs) david cage and it like feels kind of weird or whatever but (laughs) i think what we're really the whole point of that feeling is you're not the only there's a bunch of different races and there's, there's a hierarchy of between them so it's like there's people that have little horns that come out of their head and every single king has always been that race so they're you know that's why everyone thinks that they're more important it's not just like horns are strong and have good iron in them or something it's like they They've built out the world to be like everyone in parliament has horns almost like 90 percent and every king has had that and everything and all all this stuff to make it seem like, of course, society would naturally start thinking they're more, quote unquote, superior because the only thing that society lets them look up at as something that's proper is the I think they're called Elmers or something like that is the horn people. So like they explain everything and not just like this is because we're saying so it's because that's how society was built hundreds of years ago before we're even getting to this story. So that that kind of tracks too. And then there's these people with angel wings who have a natural tract for more intelligence for some reason. Like that's just the way that their race is. So they're viewed uh, as better because they're really good at engineering and whatever. So they get high paying jobs. So naturally over the course of several hundreds of years of them getting higher paying jobs and rising to better employment opportunities, people just naturally view them as better because that's what's happening. It's like, not because they have angel wings and that looks cool. It's because of like people, and then people assume that you're more smart just because you have angel wings and that, all that kind of stuff. So they've t- taken a lot of effort to build the world to be based on that premise. And then all of the things that, that launch the story are based upon happening to be in this world and then longing for a world where that's not the case is like where the magic comes from. So then there's also a lot of like hope and drive and stuff and not just in the corny way of like, wouldn't you love if the world wasn't like this? It was, it's more like, okay, we need to meticulously format a way to try to make the world not like this. How could one person do that who's on the lowest of the system in which the world is currently laid out? And not just in a trivial, like, wouldn't this be a fun hypothetical? It's almost like trying to be very realized and set. And it's like, how could one person do that in this really weird fictionalized world where politics works a lot different and, you know, goes from a royal <laughs> a royal system to something different and what that might look like. And I mean, oh, it's just like... I was so in, getting so invested in like you reading all the little lore n- nublets because I'm just like, what, what? Oh, I wonder why like the wolf people are viewed as lesser and you go read their little thing. It's like because X, Y, Z and they have yeah. reasoning behind why people are perceived as the way they are based on society. Like there's one race that lives three times longer than any other race. It's like people always view them as wiser simply because they're around longer. So it's like you normally only mm. meet them when they're in their older age. 
So like, oh yeah, they're just like the wise race. They always know what's going on. It's like, that's only because they live longer though. And that's just like a natural tract of their race. And just the, the characters you interact with are also supremely well-written and you know they're your little bubble of safety because they're the only characters in the world it seems like who aren't prejudiced so it also feels like you found your people and you feel safe mm. so it's also fun to to harbor those connections with those kind of people because it's kind of like your friend it very much feels like your high school friend group in persona five but over here where literally every other metric has changed because mm. now you're in a magical castle world with all this other crazy stuff going on it creates a world where prejudice exists and it's not just because because they're at the bottom, it's like this race has this trait and then higher ups in a society who want to maintain power weaponize society's view of said trait. And I've, I'm at a point where I'm mm-hmm. like thinking about it every night and like I'm very excited to talk about it in the future. And the demo is very good and I'm excited for where it's going. This was all a clip from Bonus Pod, which is our Patreon exclusive podcast. And if you unlock it at patreon.com slash minmax with two ends at the $5 tier, or if you upgrade your current tier to the $5 tier, we will DM you on Patreon with a Steam code for 1000 times resist. It's one of Kelsey Lewin and Jacob Geller's favorite games of 2024. So again, we will send you a Steam code for 1000 times resist. If you unlock Bonus Pod, get this full extended episode, all the other episodes, and a ton more content that Bonus Podcast feed. So jump in. $5 tier. We'll DM you a code. This offer is valid through October 4th, 2024. Thank you so much, everybody.